The poet Christine Castle wrote, I envy rivers. They flow forever free through some of the most beautiful of places, yet can always be found right where we left them. The Delaware River starts its run from the quiet streams in New York State's Catskill Mountain region, and from there flows more than 300 miles past four states and some breathtaking scenery. Come on, I'll show you. There often comes a time when I separate my mind from the worries and hassles of the daily grind. My imagination goes why clouds and water flows Where it takes us no one ever knows So come on Delaware Won't you take me where You run between the mountains and the sky Always running free to where I always want to be So come on Delaware Won't you take me there Kick my soul adrift, my guitar into a riff, singing with black bear and white pine. Where time rolls along, like the lyrics to a song, the Delaware is such a state of mind. Delaware is not a big river as major rivers run, but it is the longest, free-flowing river in the northeastern United States and about as diverse as any single body of water can be. From the northern terminus of the river's east and west branches below Hancock, New York, to where it finally joins with the Atlantic Ocean at Delaware Bay, the Delaware is a river that runs deep in definition. In a span of just a few paddle strokes, the river can change in character from churning rapids to placid drift pools and eddies. Over its 330 mile course, river widths can vary from 150 to more than 1500 feet, and water depths can measure from pools 100 feet deep to barely ankle high shallows. Just as the Delaware River varies in depth and flow, so does the geographic makeup of its shores as it passes by the states of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. More than half the land along the Delaware River corridor slopes at an angle greater than 15%, while other sections float lazily past low-lying farmland and pastures. To the north, narrow channels beneath pine-studded cliffs limit navigation to canoes and other small watercraft, while further to the south, large sea-going vessels sail a waterway flanked by large cities and the commercial industry that drives them. The Delaware River Corridor also changes with each passing season. Spring rains and runoff from melting snow can often raise river levels enough to crest banks along floodplains. Summer is a time when warm weather and cool mountain breezes attract recreational boaters by the tens of thousands to the river's northern region, where they can hit the water in tubes, rafts, canoes, and kayaks. As summer drifts into autumn, the boating frenzy on the river cools with water temperatures. The number of visitors to the Delaware starts dropping off, and Mother Nature celebrates in a most colorful way. By mid-October, the Upper Delaware Valley is splashed with orange, yellow, and red as nature paints a bright but temporary masterpiece. Gray flannel skies announce the coming of winter when the river will freeze, break up, and freeze again until pack ice chokes channels and piles high along shorelines, a natural cycle repeated each year since the valley was first formed. Now to tell a story of the Upper Delaware Valley, we have to look back over 400 million years and through several dynamic earth processes. The earth processes that form the Delaware River Valley are the combination of plate tectonics, the movement of the earth's crustal plates across its surface. Time is the great denominator and uh, erosion and the force of moving water. 
over a denominator of hundreds of millions of years. That laid the basic groundwork, if you will, of the Delaware River Valley. Scientists say it was a very different Delaware Valley than the one we know today, and one inhabited by some very different creatures. Mastodons uh, in, during the age of the glaciers, but all the way back to jellyfish, primitive jellyfish, little critters that looked like uh, horseshoe crabs, called trilobites. When we come back, we're going to look at how the glacial pass set the course for today's Delaware River and how its long history is written in the stone along its shores.